Dennis Dryad, I'll show you a really super special effects wax that will change what this frame looks like now into something that really is super special. And then I'll show you something else that you can boost whatever it is you put in there. So we'll just wait for that to dry. Next day, I'll let this dry overnight. And as you can see, it's nice and clear. And take the clamps off, put together. Cut the glass in a tick. But before we do, I've got to show you this special effects wax. This is the stuff here. Libron Special Effects Liming. And it gives a beautiful sort of beach house or French provincial look. And there it is. What do you do? Grab a rag. No special preparation. And then just rub it all over the frame that you've made or whatever it is you want to put the finish on. And make sure you get it into all the little nooks and crannies. And I don't know if you've seen the Woodworking Masterclass one where I actually made this frame. I used the opposite. I used a, a black wax to give it that aged look. And for this, I'm actually going to go all around the frame and on the outside rails as well. And on the inside of where the glass is going to sit, that way you won't get any dark lines of the timber coming through. All right, that's it. Then get a clean bit of rag or a clean bit of the rag that you're actually using and then just wipe off the excess. Now that in itself has changed the look of the frame dramatically, but I'm going to let it dry for a bit while I cut the glass and then I'll show you something else you can do, which brings it up even more. So I'll just put that to one side. All right, wash my hands, got most of the wax off because I didn't want to get wax onto the glass. My normal glass cutter is actually down in my other workshop and I thought, oh, I'll buy one of these cheap ones online. Um, yeah, they're two bucks. Don't, they're rubbish. What happened was I filled that full of oil and as soon as I did, all the oil ripped out and went everywhere. But I've got it now, so I might as well use it. Okay, let's see how close we got. And there it is. What I might do is I'm going to cut the background of what my wife made to the size of that glass. And then we'll see how it looks when we put it in the frame. And then I'll show you something else extra special you can do that will really bring it alive. And this is a rotary cutter, which <clears throat> again, I found in my wife's sewing room. And I thought they are so good, I must have it. So I have. And that's central, I'm happy with that. Now I just put pressure on the glass and just run this up the side. And there we have the design cut exactly to the size of the glass. Now that's how it looks in the frame now. For me, it's a bit washed out. So here is where it becomes very creative. And what I've got is a piece of Vivona, which is an off cut. And uh, really there's not much I could do with it. I could make a box or what have you, but I'm gonna use it to highlight this particular embroidery I've got here. Now if I put the glass over the top, bring it up to this bottom edge here, and I've got a little bit of broken veneer there, and there's a split here, and that mark there. What I'll do is grab the frame, put it over the top, and I'm fortunate because the frame now covers the break up here, and the break down here, and this blemish here I think it will disappear when I cut the oval. So what I've got here is a plywood oval that I made. And if you want to know how to make these, 
check it out there. It's a video I did for Woodworking Masterclass. Now for this particular one, all I did was went to Word on the computer and went to Shapes and I picked the distance I wanted here, which I think it was 300 mil, and from here, which is 200 mil, and then pressed Create Oval and printed it out. And then stuck it onto a piece of plywood and cut around it. If you don't have access to Word or you're not comfortable doing that, again, if you check that video out at Woodworking Masterclass, I'll show you how you can make ovals without even using a compass or anything tricky. It's just done a couple of nails and a piece of wood. And what I'm going to do is keep this as my straight edge down the bottom and then I'm going to cut around the glass that'll give me the square. As I've said before, when you're cutting veneer, you only very, very light pressure and don't try and do it in one cut because if you do, you're going to, in a lot of cases, tear the veneer. And this Vivona is extremely fragile, so I don't want to force it. And when it comes away, it just comes away easily like that. Now I've got to look at that and think where I'm going to place the circle. To me, I prefer to have the pandas in this open area here, and these possibly could be dark clouds coming down. But it's personal preference, it doesn't matter, it's whatever pleases you. And that's the great thing about doing good work, it's what pleases you, or in this case, pleases the wife. And seeing she doesn't work with veneer, I think I've got a couple of head, points head start on her. So now I'm gonna put this oval. I've got a little bit of double-sided sticky tape there, and I'm gonna place it so it's central. And now I'm just gonna trace around using a knife and cut that oval out. I'm not gonna do it in one hit, I'm do it in sections. And there we have it. This piece here I'll save for something else, but we dodged a bullet and we got hold of that nasty little hole there. Okay, so, frame. Glass. If we get this piece of veneer, pop it in, then put the panda over it, then put the back on. How much difference does that make? That to me is spectacular. I just love it. It sort of brings it to life. There's one more thing we can do which can change the frame again and really give it a unique style and look. So we'll do that right now. Get a rag, wipe off any excess that's still lying around, but you'll notice also that the wax has hardened after a while and it won't come off on your fingers. So now to highlight the molding itself, what I'm gonna do is sand off the high spots. And that's it, all done. With one plane and a little bit of thought, we've come up with a picture frame that would cost a fair amount of money if you actually had to go and buy it. So we'll put all this together and we'll see what it looks like when it's finished and then it can go out on the wall. And another nice project that is done inside. And to prove I didn't make much of a mess, I'll show you how messy it is behind the bench where I'm standing. So as you can tell, I didn't make a huge amount of mess. And the vacuum cleaner will pick that up in no time. And that just goes to prove that you can do woodworking in a small confined space inside the house. With minimal noise, minimum mess, easy to clean up, no dust, and things you can hang on the wall that people will be impressed with. So this is Steve saying, remember, if you've got a desire, if you can allocate the time and you've got the space, you too will have room for woodwork. Keep it safe, enjoy your woodwork. Bye for now.